Welcome to Life Mastery for Women. I'm your host, Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. I've been studying mind mastery and emotional management and energy work and its connection to spirituality for over 25 years. And in this podcast, I help guide you out of your daily struggles in life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality. Life is hard, but your daily growth doesn't have to be. Join me three times a week as I lead you inward on a healing, connecting, and creating journey. Let's go get that nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you self-activating. If you're not self-activating, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So what the flap is self-activating? Self-activating is basically motivating yourself to do something, whatever the something is. I always have a a clear defined path of where my future is going and who I want to be and what I want to do and what do I want to have. And man, do I always motivate myself every single day of the week. So not true. So not true. I I do I I do have the ability to motivate myself, and I will give you my my secret here in just a couple minutes. My secret is um, I can't tell you my secret yet, but I will tell you this. I remember when I was younger, um, I had graduated from, or I was like I was a senior, so getting ready to graduate, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to have this big beautiful future, and I'm going to have this family. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to live in this big giant house on all this property. And people would say, well, what are you going to do to make money? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, well, shouldn't you figure that out? Well, yeah, but I'm just going to wait and see. Waiting and seeing. Wait and see. Wait and see. What are we waiting and seeing for? We are in a position every single moment of our lives to create our life, to go to use our our imagination and our visualization skills and project ourselves into the future that says, hey, you know what? I want to do or be or have this. And then we have to make those moves to do those things. So it's kind of a combination of what you think and the action that you take. So I remember, you know, uh, probably one of my teachers or maybe my guidance counselor would ask, you know, what, you know, where do you see yourself in five or 10 years? I'm like, I don't, I thought it was the stupidest question. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what, where I'm going to go or what my thing is, but nobody ever finished the sentence. Where do you see yourself in five or 10 years? And then they pause for a second and go, you know, that you can project your life, that you could like be the director in your own life, right? Like you can create the life you want to live. You can go to college or not. You can be an entrepreneur or an employee. You can be, you could uh, go to this other education or you could um, not do anything. You can stay at home in your mom's basement and play video games. It's your choice. It wasn't until the year 2000 that I realized I had a choice. And it is one of my favorite, my favorite phrases still today. You have a choice. You always have a choice. Everyone thinks, you know, someone decided something for you. They they fired you. They divorced you. They um they they said mean things to you. They kicked you in the dirt. They they did, and then you go, that's it, that's it. It's over. And I go, you know what? It is so not over. A warrior never stops. A warrior never gives up. They get up. They, they muster up the courage within themselves and they say, you know what, that was an experience and I'm going to move on from that experience and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to recreate myself so I can become a better version of me. That has been a motto of mine for a long time. I can't say that, you know, I haven't given up and changed directions at some point, but I will say that I have not fully given up in my entire life. Like I was just thinking this morning when I was having breakfast that the day I give up will be the day I stop breathing. The day I stop learning is the day I stop breathing. The day I stop moving and creating and pushing myself to the boundaries will be the day I stop breathing. So at 89 years old, I'm still going to be pushing along. And I hope you do too. I hope that you see life as this, this canvas to be created, this, this piece of artwork that can be any color, any shape, any style that you want. You get to choose. And then if you create that canvas and it turns out 
that it's not what you want and it's not the colors you like and it doesn't have the right shapes, then guess what? The next day, you get a blank canvas and you get to do it all over again. And it's an amazing thing once you can really truly realize what is at the palm, what is in the palm of your hands. Because as soon as you realize what's in the palm of your hands, you will never, you will never let anybody get you down again. Never. Because you can create the richness and the value and the juiciness of life every single morning, every time you wake up. So my secret, and I sort of hinted at it just a second ago, but my secret is to project myself into the future. I like to use the three categories, be, do, and have, that help me to hone in and zero in on what it is that I want. Now, I can change my mind, and often I do. I change my mind the next day even. But the very first question to ask yourself in a projection of the future And you can go out as far as you want. You can go out a year. You can go out three days. You can go out 30 years. It doesn't matter. You choose. Who do I want to become? And those would be certain values that you hold in a person. Do I want to be a person of integrity? Do I want to be a person of power? Do I want to be a person who's kind and loving and generous? Do I want to be a person who's who's loving and has great deep connections with others? Do I want to be a person who is happy and joyous and and fun or adventurous. You decide. And you could just pick a few things. Sometimes I would say pick pick a couple of things that you have about you right now that you absolutely love and then add to it. Expand on it. Define it. So you say, I want to be a person who has deep connections. Okay, awesome. Put that on a piece of paper or in your journal and then define it. What does that mean to you? Because what it means to you might be different than what it means to me. So I want to have a defined line around that that says, you know what? I want to be a loving person. I want to be somebody who has deep connections. And those connections are this. I want to be a great listener. I want to have conversations that help that person. I want to have fun and deep, meaningful conversations with others. It doesn't have to be everybody. But I want to experience that. I want to feel the true connection between myself and this other person. Now, that's my definition. Okay, then the next is, once you figure out who the B is, who do I want to be? Who do I want to become? That's your character. That's your, you're basically designing your avatar, right? You're designing your character. Everybody who plays a video game, you get to design the character. You get to, what color is their hair? What are their clothes? What do their shoes look like? What's their face? Where's their nose? How many earrings do they have? But then you go a level deeper and you say, what kind of person are they? And you get to pick all of those things, okay? You get to choose what, who are they? What kind of, are they a warrior? Are they an elf? Are they a wizard? You get to choose. And then you design their character. You get to do that. You get to do that. And you are going to find, you know, someone be like, yeah, but Jen, I have this personality where I'm just a pissed off person all the time. And I go, no, that's not that's not your personality. A pissed off person just means that you are looking at the world from a pissed off direction and therefore you are pissed off. You can change that. That is not your personality. There are things about you that are your natural innate talents and skills, and we'll get to that in a second. But the person that you are, the character that you hold can always be changed. It's about energy. It's about belief. It's about perspective. Look look around the corner. Instead of looking at all the things that piss you off, look at all the things that make you grateful. Look at all the things that that you love, and you will find that you will be less and less pissed off. I promise you. The next is... What do you want to do? So now that you've developed this character who has this, who have the, these character traits, that is the being, is the next is what do you want to do? What are your activities? What are you physically doing? And in the physically doing, it doesn't always have to be, you know, exercise or I want to move my body or this way. It's the doing. What are the activities? What are the the physical things that you're doing? And design that. And that sometimes can be more fun. Actually, the last one is probably the most fun. But but the doing is, you know, I want to travel. I want to I want to have fun. I want to experience new things. I want to go for walks and hikes. I want to swim. I want to kayak. I mean, that could be some of those things. 
but I want to work in an office. I want to I want to develop properties. I want to speak on stage. I want to uh, I want to be a mother and have babies. I want to raise cattle. I mean, what is the doing? What are you doing on a day-to-day basis? And all of that can change. That list can be pretty good. And I would say narrow that down to maybe, I don't know, maybe a good 10. So the being, maybe narrow that down to five. And the doing, maybe narrow that down to probably 10. Because I do a lot of different activities. I love projects. I love speaking. I love my podcast. I love coaching. I love climbing, everything. I, there's lots of activities I love to do outside. I have two dogs. I have three boys. I have a beautiful wife. I have all these things. And, and there's a lot. You know, there's a lot of things I like to do, okay? This is just giving you an idea of like what's important to you and taking you just a step further is what can I what can I do with my life? How do I create my life, right? And if any of these questions along the way are like you just don't know, you don't know the answer, then this is where I would ex- I would encourage you to explore the world a little bit more. Go out more, meet new people, ask them what they do. Go out and go out and see the world. Go drive through your through your town and see different businesses and see what those people do. When you go into places, is look at what people are doing, you know, and and go to races and go to events and go to meetups and and see what people do, and that will give you a really really good idea. And also, I would encourage you, even in the being part, is when you're out and about and meeting with people, it's like try to try to hone in on what kind of person that is. And when you look around these people, of like, um, I really, really like that person, or I respect that person, or I value that person, is like, what is it about them that you value? What is it about them that you like so much? Because that is when we when we go out into the world and we see those things that we like, that is our spirit calling forward and pointing to that thing to get your attention to become more than what you are right now. We're always, our spirit is always, always, always seeking expansion, which is why change never stops. We get there, we reach the goal, we get the degree, we get the job, and we're like, yeah, we're great. And a month later, you're like, damn it. Why am I like looking for more money? Or why am I seeking more this or more that? It's like, because our spirit is never going to be satisfied with stagnation. Never, 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 never. Okay. The last one is have. Now, we are a very materialistic society and a culture. We buy a lot of things. We have Amazon. We get things delivered to our door within 24 hours. We get things on sale. We get, you know, buy one, get one free. BOGO sales all over the place. 25% discount. We get points. You get free this and free that. And it's like we are very a consuming uh, society and culture. But sometimes there's other important things to have. And I want you to dig a little bit deeper past the material things. What do you want to have? My biggest thing would be I want to have a thriving business. I want to have a thriving podcast. I want to have the ability to travel. I want this kind of freedom. But you know what my number one is? I want to have ultimate health. I want my body to feel amazing. I want to feel strong and flexible. I want to because I love the the activities of the of the world. I love to move my body. And listen, you only get one. So you might as well take care of it. You might as well build some strength and some flexibility so then when you're 10 years older, you're still going to feel pretty darn good. We have to take care of our bodies. You have to fuel it properly with nutrition. You have to get rid of the things that are killing your body slowly like sugars and alcohols and drugs. You have to get rid of those things out of your life. But here's the thing. You go towards those things because you don't value your life in a way that you can see the longevity in your happiness. You go towards the things like drugs and alcohol and sugars and fatty foods, like high, really uh, foods that don't give you, give your body any nutrition. We are attracted to those foods because there's something about the way that we perceive ourselves that we just don't care. And that is a terrible way to live because eventually when you do care, you're now going to have to undo all of those crappy foods that you just ate because now you're you're overweight, you've got other issues going on inside, your liver is failing, your lungs lung capacity is smaller. You you know, you've got uh you've got diabetes, you've got heart disease, you've got lung situation, you've got right? So, take care of your body. And here's my here's my biggest piece of advice. Because it is now becoming so aware to us we are becoming so aware that we can create our lives. 
we can change things. We can release stuck energy. We can release limiting beliefs and negative self-talk. We can we can start to create the life that we want to live. If we start working at the energy field. Like that is what my my entire podcast is about. That is what my entire life is about. You walk in and stand in front of me and say, listen, my life is crappy in these ways. And I go, okay, let's start working on those limiting beliefs and start basically releasing the anchors to your balloon. So you can start to fly and you can start to see a different perspective. And when you do that, you will value so much more in your life. Because right now, if you don't, it's just because you're in the dirt and you can't see. You can't see the sun and you can't see the sky. And that's why. So I say, find some value in yourself. Spend some time right there finding value in yourself. And if you can't find it, then I suggest releasing the things that are blocking you. What is it that you can't see? And release that. And if you have trouble releasing that, I have programs. You can join my program. We, it's the, our main focus is releasing energy. It's, it's cutting the crap out of our life that we don't need anymore. It's, it's unkinking the hose. It's cleaning out the hose so life force energy can move through us. And it's, it's flourishing our garden of life. And it's cleaning out the sidewalk of life, of all dog poop that you're possibly throwing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go listen to number three, literally podcast number three, Stop Throwing Dog Poop. It is a great analogy of how we live our lives with our beliefs and our negative self-talk and all the things that we throw out in front of us on the sidewalk of life. And then we get mad that we step in it. So take a peek in your future. Take a peek in your future. Get out the large canvas and write, be, do, have. And start to fill in those blanks and start to recreate your life from this point forward. Because it is from this point that we create. Not backwards. Though when you work with energy, there is a way to, to start healing to start healing um, the past. It's a very, very powerful um, uh, coaching technique that I have. And it's, it's about going back in the past and healing those things. And healing all of the things that happened to you, all of the trauma and all of the, the things that people, quote, made you believe and even believe about yourself or believe about the world. And when you heal those things, it is like building a whole new universe for yourself. You come back out of that coaching and you're like, oh, my God, my life is completely different. I just coached, I just coached someone last week and uh, it was one-on-one coaching and he was going through a struggle when he was in college, and it was this amazing transformation that happened by us releasing the beliefs that he had surrounding that time in his life. And he sounds like a completely different person. You get on the phone with him yesterday, and he's just like, my relationships are better. I feel more confident. And he was just like talking with this, with this confidence. And that was like nine years ago. And we were able to release that from the past where now where he is in his life is just, I'm making these decisions. I'm doing this thing. He's got these ideas and he's like, I'm running with this idea. And it was this amazing shift in his life from one coaching because working at the energy level is where everything changes. It's where everything shifts. The problem that you have right now in your life that is preventing you from moving forward, I guarantee you, is stuck energy in your emotional body. And it it makes us do weird things. It's like you got gunk stuck in the hose, you turn the water on and nothing comes out at the other end. And you're like, what the flip? Like, how come nothing's coming out? Because there's something clogging and preventing the water. Once you start unkinking that hose and the water starts running clear, life gets grand. It gets better. Instead of a one, you're now a two. Instead of a two, you're now a three. Then you move from a three to a five and a six to a nine. And it just, you're like, oh my God, like this is, and it all can happen in a very, very short period of time. And that's what I do. That's my work. And if any of this is interesting to you, then check me out on our Facebook group, Lady Rising. Make a post in there. Come in through the membership questions. You say, I came in through the podcast. And then you write a post. You share a message. You do something. And you say, hey, you know what? I'm interested in your coaching. Can we set up a call? And we just have a conversation. Let me just see where you're at. Let me see if I can even help you. If it's something that's interesting to you, let me know. So take your time now. You have be, do, have written on, I said, your canvas. You could write, I use whiteboards all over my house. You can use a whiteboard. You can use your journal. You can literally use a canvas, whatever you want, right? Be, do, have on there. And you go, you know what? I'm going to change my life. It all starts with a decision and it starts with a commitment to you. Because let me ask you, as Dr. Phil says, is what you're doing working for you? 
And I'm guaranteeing it's probably not. It's probably not working. I've been there. I was there. I was you. 20, 30 years ago, I was you. I was low. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I was angry. I had no friends. I had crappy jobs after crappy jobs after crappy jobs. Then I had crappy relationships after crappy relationships. And I made a decision in this defining moment of my life to say, you know what? I'm sick of living this way. I know. I know there's a better way. And I'm going to start finding that better way. And now with this exercise today, writing and filling in the list and going and getting some experiences in the world, because you ask a six-year-old that says, what do you want to do when you grow up? They're going to be like, I don't know. I'm being an astronaut. They're just going to pick something that's that's around them. And you could write that down. Then you ask them again when they're 14. Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, and he's going to give you completely different answers. Because when he was four, he had a very limited scope. When he's 14, it's a little bit bigger. When he's 44, it's a lot bigger. And it's going to be different than what he said when he was 14 and four. He's not an astronaut, and he's not a radio DJ, and he's not a video gamer, right? He's a professor at a college teaching law (laughs) or something, right? So go out there and get those experiences. Fill in those blanks. Fill in those blanks. Do this work. Promise me you'll do this work because it's enlightening. It really is it really starts to point in a direction that's like, you know what? Hey, I can have that thing. I can have that thing. And you know what? Here's two things. One, you want to build the hope because the hope is what's going to pull you forward. Okay. You want to, you want to put a rubber band around your future and you want it to be hope because that's what's going to pull you forward and bring your future closer to you. The other is recognize what those beliefs are that are holding you back because all of those can be released. They're just beliefs. And beliefs are just thoughts that you keep thinking. I'm not good enough. I'm not rich enough. I don't have any money. My husband won't let me. I don't live in a in a in a neighborhood that will do that. I don't know what I'm doing. All of those beliefs can be changed. Every single belief you have creates your reality. Every single one. So my thought is, well shit, let's get better beliefs. Let's create better beliefs. And you're like, well, Jen, now come on. This is reality. And I go, you know what? Reality is only in your head. Reality is only in your head. And my thought is, if I'm looking at my outside world and that reality that I'm experiencing is not very good, I'm going to change the channel. And changing the channel goes inward, starts working at this energy level, this richness, this thing that we can't see. But when we work at it and we release it, it immediately changes our life. Immediately. That's my experience. And most of my uh, coaching clients have had that same experience. They walk away and they're like, you know what? I feel amazing. I don't have that same belief anymore. I've installed this new belief and off and running they go. And things change. Things change for them. Their life their life completely shifts. They go home and their relationship is better. They go to work and they get a promotion. They go to the mailbox and there's a check in the mail. They get their they go and get their wheels rotated at their at their mechanic and the mechanic does it for free. I'm not kidding. This is the stuff that happens to me. This is the stuff that happens to me. It happens to Amy every single time. And we coach all the time. It happens to my clients. It happens to the people that I've worked with over the years that have done this kind of work, and it's amazing and it's magical. So I hope that um, you will do this work on your journal, be, do, have, fill in those, fill in those, um, those lists and start to go out into the future. You go out into the future and you ask yourself, where do I want to be? What do I want to have? Who do I want to become? And then you say, okay, what adjustments do I need to make? What adjustments do I need to make in my life that allow me to have that kind of future? You know, when you get in a plane and you're flying from, let's say, uh, northern Michigan to Miami, wink, wink, because we're going to a women's retreat here in a little while. And um, when the plane takes off, it doesn't just fly literally directly to Miami, Now, I'm not talking about, you know, the 16 layovers or anything like that. But what I'm talking about is they're constantly course correcting. There might be several miles that it's flying due west towards California. And then it's got to course correct. And it changes the latitude and the longitude and the degrees and the wind and the whatever. And now it's flying east. And now we're heading towards the Atlantic. Okay. And then, okay, now we got to go back this way. And if you were to look at the trail of a plane flying in the air, from, from northern Michigan to Miami, it's going to be kind of zigzag, okay? Your life is going to be kind of zigzag, right? This is a way 
that you can activate yourself. I can I can sit here in the morning and go, who do I want to be? What do I want to have? Um, who do and uh, what do I want to do? And I can I can create a little tiny mini version of myself for the next thirty days and go, okay, here's the things I want to do. You know what? I want to get stronger. I want my body to feel better. Okay, I'm going to eat these foods. I'm going to eat less of these foods. I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to work out every other day. I'm going to do these exercises. I'm going to walk the dogs every day. I'm going to get outside. I'm going to ground. I'm going to balance my chakras. I'm going to meditate every day. And then by the end of the thirty days, your life is completely different. That's exciting. I don't know about you, but that really, really excites me. Do I still have a similar personality? Yes, because I think, but not in that angry one. You know, I get to release the things that no longer serve me. Does that make sense? I now get to be a better version of myself. I'm calmer, more peaceful, kind, more loving. My relationships are deeper. I'm like the things that would set me off before no longer set me off. But am I the same? Do I talk kind of the same? Yeah, sort of. I mean, if I don't have those beliefs and they're not feeding my vocabulary, but I'm still feeling better. I'm making progress. And now I've got this tool in my back pocket that I can say, you know what? This is how I'm going to grow and change. And where am I going to be a year from now? And as long as you're still on the planet, you still have the ability to change your life. I don't care if you're 99 years old, you still have the ability to release some of that thing and to enjoy the magic that can totally, totally happen in your life. If you want some assistance with this, check out my Facebook group, Lady Rising. When you come in through the podcast or with the membership question, say you're coming in through the podcast and just ask your question. Ask your question. Allow me and the, and the community to support you. So go get activated and I'll see you on the next episode. If you enjoyed this show, please consider making a small donation. This helps me to continue creating powerful episodes for you each week, but also you become a bigger part of changing the world by changing yourself one episode at a time. By investing in my show, you are investing in yourself, your life, and your planet. And by elevating yourself, you are elevating others around you. And I thank you.